Hello and welcome to this lecture. In this lecture, we will see GitLab. What is GitLab? GitLab is a end-to-end -end DevOps lifecycle tool which provides code management, issue tracking, CI CD, security scanning, and deployment. So this tool has been used heavily by enterprise and developer, open source developer as well, to manage the life cycle of their application. However, in this example, we will only focus on the basic Git operation and maybe a little bit of CI CD. Because here, the goal is that I want to give a basic understanding of how you can use Git based services with different service provider. Take an example of any developer who is trying to write a code or want to deploy an application into production. What they do? They will first do some code changes into the local machine. Next thing, do a push to the remote repository. This remote Git repository could be anything. It could be GitLab, GitHub, Bitbucket, or AWS code. Once the code is in the repository, now you want to run some regular life cycle of the code, which is called CI-CD or continuous integration and deployment. What it involves, for example, doing some kind of test automation. Because when you do write a code, before you deploy to production, you want to make sure you are not introducing any new bugs into the system. Once you are sure about that, what you do, you do a build and packaging as well. Build and packaging, which can be pushed into some kind of artifactory or a repository of application from where you can eventually deploy the solution into the environment. And all these operations could be done inside the GitLab ecosystem. Remember, similar thing you can do on GitHub as well and other tools like Azure DevOps. And once you have your code in the repository, now you are, can choose to deploy the solution into either public cloud or private cloud. To summarize, similar to GitHub, GitLab will host and manage the pipeline that you have configured. Pipeline could be configured for vulnerability scaling, security scanning as well. And because these pipeline are so powerful, you can modify them as a GitOps pipeline for your AI ML workload. In order to log into GitLab, first thing you'll do is go to their website, gitlab.com. And you can choose to sign in or get a free, free trial. Remember, they run both type of businesses, enterprise, as well as the end user. In this case, I'll be using the free version. So I can click on sign in. And because I already have an account, it is showing my username and password, but you can actually register for a brand new account. You can put your name or you can choose to use directly using GitHub login. So it makes very user friendly for you to get started. So I'll go ahead and log into my account. Once you log into your account, first time you should see something like this. This is a completely blank project. You don't have anything. And this is how you can see in the side menu, what all features you can do. And you can see this is a full blown psych solution. You can do everything. You can do a monitoring, management, environment, operations, security, everything. But to for make our life a little bit easy, I will take a simple example of creating a project, doing cloning and pushing so that you can at least get your hands warm with this tool and start using and playing with it. So I'll click on create project. I'll simply give a name my first project and whatever I put, it automatically picks up my project slug so that because you don't, it is easy not to have space in your name in the URL. And I will choose a public, public repo so that it's easy for me to collaborate with other folks. Click on the create project. And because first time I'm logged in, it is actually showing me what things are I can enable. So you can see first what it says, you don't have SSH key, add your SSH key. So I will click here and I will go ahead and add my SSH key. So you can go to your laptop and basically copy and paste your public key here. So after I have added my public key, 
Now it is asking me automatically build, test and deploy your application with predefined CICC pipeline. I would say yes, enable in the setting and I can go ahead and enable. And again, I'm just doing default everything. I'm not worrying too much about the configuration because I just want to get started with my project. Once it is done, you can see a base template of your project is ready. And next thing I'm going to do is I will clone this repository into my machine. So in order to clone, I will do simple. I will use a SSH base terminal. And I do So my repository has been cloned. Here is a new thing. Because it is a GitLab is a different application, you can see it automatically started building because first time we are creating the project and it already started build process. We'll go into this D later. What I want to show is that you can, how you can use the web ID to get started. Web ID, what it is, it is a graphical version or a web-based version of the Visual Studio code. So in case if you don't want to, if you're not comfortable with command line for whatever reason, you can actually use web ID to do everything. So what I'll do here, I will copy some of the code that I have for illustration purpose so that we can play with it. So let's create a new file, call it a hello.py. I will add some sample Python code into the repository so that we can run some CI CD to test it. What this YAML file is doing, I'm defining the stage as a test and I'm simply doing a pip install the dependency that we have and running the script just simple this is a kind of a hello world example i'm doing here once i have saved all the file by the way all the files are saved automatically here so you can see this icon it means all has been already added i just need to add some comment added some sample files and my code has been committed and I click and you can see everything is here. And the moment I have checked in, it will automatically fire the, the GitLab runner. And the GitLab runner, how it works, I'll explain in the later lecture that it actually pulls a Docker image and try to run the application or whatever the stage you have defined. And this is actually used if you are in a little bit next stage of software development where you are doing the full CI CD DevOps lifecycle. In this one, you can see it simply did the install and it just ran a sample program. This is just to see how you can use GitLab on your day-to-day -day basis and you can use it as a repository. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and feel free to leave any comments or any question if you have. Thank you.